Geekazine.com CES 2019. We're here at the Qualcomm booth. We're gonna learn a little bit more about this V2X that we were at the press conference and well, how that's not really autonomous driving, that is more assistive driving. And we're gonna do that next. Qualcomm CES 2019, we're here in what would be considered the car of the future, although this is probably not the car that you will see on the road. This is a nice demonstration. We, we saw that demonstration yesterday at the press conference. Yep. Um, and so we got the idea of how it all works. But let's ask this question. From what everybody's seen from the footage, mm -hmm. how much of that is actually going to be into an actual car? Well, um, you're going to want to start to see this experience in a car in terms of performance, in terms of being able to have that phone or that tablet experience to be able to pinch and zoom and have a very easy flowing intuitive UI, okay. a very uh, a voice activated UI. You're going to start to see that and you are starting to see that in vehicles today. So um, even though today we have these very large stretch displays and there's a lot of information, um, as the autonomous uh, kind of age comes into play where you know you're the passenger as well as the driver are going to be have, have a lot more cycles and, and the ability to do a lot more things and interact with your car or interact with your displays in, in new ways but this is just one concept as, as we've as we've seen in different concepts uh, displays don't necessarily need to be cons completely stretched across the display we can have center console displays that stretch and and yeah. now have the curved displays across your your front uh, console here okay and, and I suppose uh, as you, if you have uh, whatever budget you have, you'll have it all, the, the maximum amount of displays or the minimal amount of displays. It, exactly. And, and, and these displays will be all likely all uh, um, HD resolution displays, 4K, 8K. I mean, it, it, it really the sky's the limit. It really goes back to, in many ways, what kind of user experience can that chipset really provide? Okay. Um, does it support the, uh, the high resolution assets? Does it support all of the the great navigation features and then the points of interest and then natural language processing. This, this, so as, as the chipsets become more mature and more powerful, these user experiences are really gonna change the way we interact in the vehicle as driver and passenger, as well as how we interact with our, with our car. Okay. Now you talked about, uh, uh, we, we talked about driver distraction mm -hmm. and uh, getting, getting your focus back on the road. Yep. You also talked uh, uh, just briefly, if, uh, and, and I want you to reiterate, on the ability to make sure that the passenger is alert as much as the driver. Yeah. So as a driver or even a passenger, um, the, the, you can ask the vehicle or the vehicle can have access to the car interfaces. I showed you earlier that um, there was a blinking icon in my, in my cluster and I was able to ask my assistant what that actually means. Uh, and the car was able to look in, inside the cluster and say, oh, well, hey, that's a, a flat tire or a low pressure tire. As well as I've shown is that if I wanted to wake up my passenger or have some attention to my passenger, we can start vibrating seeds or, or even have audible alerts. So um, the, the, the cameras in our vehicle have wide enough lens so they can track both the driver as well as the passenger. And the use cases uh, are, are somewhat clear now, but in the future, as the machine learning models are much become much more complex and much more efficient, we're going to be able to detect um, people bringing up, uh, holding a phone and maybe ducking their head and actually detecting a phone in the person's hand or, uh, or some other distraction like me eating a, a, a burger on the road or something like that. So these are the things that that the models, the machine learning models are actually detecting and working on that will be, that will be, will be available very shortly. And those models will be running on Snapdragon uh, processors, either in our neural processing unit or our DSP processing engines. And, uh, and what Snapdragon processors are, are in? This is a third, third generation Snapdragon processor. We have the, the previous two versions out and they're already in production in vehicles today. And we're calling this Gen 3. Okay. How long have uh, Snapdragon processors been in cars? If you think about our telematics modules, Qualcomm has, has provided modems for OEMs and tier ones for many, many years. Uh, so some of the very first telematics modules for 3G and 4G and uh, for connectivity have been in cars for over 10 years. Now our Snapdragon processors driving infotainment experiences have, 
have been in, in vehicles probably for the last uh, three to three or it's, I, if it's uh, between three and five years ago. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, you guys did the, we had the nice little Alexa fail uh, yep. during the, the yep. presentation. And one of the things that was asked was why Alexa? But sure. The reality is it's, it's, not, it's not your decision to put that in, in the car. It's going to be the automaker's decision to put whatever voice uh, recognition software is in there, right? So today, um, we'll, we'll support either the Amazon services, whether it be through the personal assistant, as well as in this case, we've, we've shown you a lot of the Amazon content for Prime Music as well as Prime, uh, Prime Video services. But we'll also support the, the, the Googles of the world to be able to support their assistants, um, as well as uh, their navigation platforms, as well as their backend services as well. Okay. Getting back to the uh, eating a hamburger or looking sure. at your phone in the car, let's say the car does get into an altercation. Will that be something that re like a police report could uh, could note into? Would, would this be then public information or could you privatize it a little bit more? I'm not sure if I'm the right person yeah, to answer okay. that question. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, yeah, but, but there, technically there would be no reason why it, why it couldn't, okay. right? The modems are always connected. They, they, they're just like your phone. They always have 24-hour service in terms of uh, being able to uh, get to the get to the um, to the Internet of Things, so to speak, uh, and that includes you know automatically detecting a crash and mm -hmm. calling nine one one without any user intervention at all. Let's talk about uh, uh, where you're going because this is the one thing that uh, really piqued my interest mm -hmm. when it when it came to uh, to these types of vehicles is is the fact you can tell you can say hey I'm going here. Mm -hmm. and the car takes on a path. Now it talks with the other cars and if Joe Blow next to you is says, hey, I want to go here and that car is eventually going to get in front of us to turn left at the sure. two intersections from now, this car then will know about that, correct? Yep. Is, is it that constant communication at that point? Qualcomm, obviously at, our, at a press conference, um, talked a lot about our cellular VDX technology. And really that's a vehicle to vehicle technology. The, the word cellular is kind of a misnomer in a sense that we don't need a carrier's network like a Verizon or AT&T. It's a direct, direct communication. So when I'm broadcasting my location, I'm broadcasting it out and anybody that's in within range of my car is gonna hear that broadcast. Okay. So within cellular VDX technology, we're, we're, we're talking to the infrastructure, we're talking to the vehicles, okay. and I'm constantly updating everybody, this is my position, this is what my car is doing. If I slam on my brakes, that information gets sent out to everybody that's in earshot in this case of a wireless connection, and that'll hear that. And the local system will, will take that message in and will determine if it's interesting to that vehicle or not. The, the main message here is that as we, cellular VDX will just become yet another sensor in the autonomy world. Okay. Whereas we'll have um, uh, radar or camera sensors that are feeding all this information in that will detect things that are typically line of sight. Yeah. With cellular VDX, you could be six cars behind me and you're gonna get that message that I send to my brakes and you're gonna know about it. So cellular VDX, VDX can have this non-line of sight uh, messaging and alerts yeah. that other sensors can't handle. Yeah, actually, uh, the one thing I always tell people when I'm driving is I'm always looking three to four cars ahead because it's sure. not going to be the car that's in front of me that's gonna slam on their brake lights exactly. uh, most of the time. It's gonna be that third car up in front that forgets to turn on its left turn signal yep. or somebody says, no, turn left here or, or, or Squirrel gets in front, whatever. Yes, exactly. And that's, that starts the chain reactions. Exactly, and that's uh, a lot where Cellular X is going. This The, the non-light of sight is a very interesting aspect of, of that technology. Okay. Uh, obviously, as well as the, the low latency connection, right? These are the things that, uh, that cars are gonna be able, to be able to talk to each other, as well as infrastructure, as well as the cloud. So we don't even know, I think, that the, the user experiences and the, and the information that is gonna be available to us. Every single intersection is gonna, can be equipped with Cellular X that send us information, whether it be street light information, uh, oh, icy road information. So street lamps could have CVTS. Exactly, and in fact, wow. we have deployments here in, uh, in, in um, Las Vegas that are actually doing that today. But what, what, what Qualcomm is really, really wanting to get across is that the performance of our, of our new chipsets really allows us to do a lot, of the, a lot of different things, as well as you know, coupling that with all of our Bluetooth, our Wi-Fi, our telematics modules for 4G and 5G, as well as our cellular inter integration. So Qualcomm has that full spectrum of hardware, software integration to be able to kind of turn over to a, a tier one or OEM and says, listen, this is everything that Qualcomm has done already in the automotive space and it'll allow that tier one or OEM to become 
come into the market so much faster because they're leveraging all of that Qualcomm technology and it's already been integrated and already been tested. Okay. Awesome. Well, Jeff, Great. thank you very much for your time. You bet. Thanks a lot to our friends over at Qualcomm for uh, giving me the VIP treatment here at CES 2019. We learned a lot about assistive driving, the V2X movement. Rather, It's not really autonomous, it is assistive driving. Keeping your eyes on the road, keeping your attention to where it needs to be. We've got a lot more here at CES 2019. You can check it out over at Geekazine, youtube.com forward slash Geekazine. Go ahead, like, subscribe, comment down below that bell notification for the next video. And check it all out. And check out a lot of the other videos I've done throughout the year, and we'll go from there. Thanks a lot, and you guys geek out.